pulpit this morning. Um, Leo's been carrying a word uh, for us and we thought he was going to bring it at another time. Um, but today's the day. Um, it's interesting, really, I was, as I was praying for him on the way down, I had a couple of pictures. I've already told him one, but there was another one. You know when you're pregnant? Well, half of you won't know what I'm talking about. But you get to a point in, in your pregnancy where you've just had enough. I mean, the, the fun of being pregnant is just completely gone, and you just want deliverance. And I know all the women know exactly what I'm talking about. And you see, that's about the seven, eight month mark. You think, oh, I just need to have this baby out now. You know, you're trying to sleep, and you know, everything's happening inside, and then the baby kicks you, and you, what do you, you just can't get comfortable. And you're crying out for deliverance. But usually it's a bit early. And, and so you've kind of got to just go another few weeks before the baby is ready to be delivered. And, you know, personally, I thought, you know, for you, you know, you've been carrying a baby. <laughs> and we thought you were going to deliver it a wee while ago, but now you're ready. And so I want to honor you. You're a man of many years in ministry. You've planted, I think, a couple of churches over here, stop hiding, I'm scoping over there on the side of the stage. <laughs> you've, um, to my understanding, you've planted a couple of churches, you've got years of ministry, and you carry a mana and a glory of God on you, which is just lovely. So I want to honor you for your years of ministry. We so appreciate having you here in this place, and you bring a flavor which is which has enriched us, so we honor you. So I want you just to honor Pastor Lee as he brings the word this way. We're delighted to have you this morning. Bless you. Bless you. I'm going to ask my wife to come today. She's going to share a scripture. Pastor Dale said Alice was allowed to share a scripture this morning. So, when Dale rang me this morning at 7 o'clock, I was semi-awake, <laughs> but after the phone call, I was really awake. <laughs> and, and so, I gave Alice the message about quarter past eight, that she was allowed to share a scripture. <laughs> so, thank you, Alice. Short notice. Alice's reply was, you need to be instant, in season, and out of season. Whew. I, I just think we're living in such exciting times now, don't you? We are living in a time of spiritual acceleration. Put the foot down, folks. Something is happening. I'm hearing it happening all around with different people. Stuff is going on. And there's an, a spiritual acceleration that is taking place in people's lives. And, and life is such an adventure. When you're walking with the Holy Spirit, you never know what he's going to do next or say to you next or what, what's going to happen. It's just so excellent. This is something that um, Shirley and I went to the Patricia King Conference this year in Auckland. And um, it was amazing, of course. All conferences are amazing, but... This was really, really good. Now, um, you'll all be familiar with um, Zechariah 37. That was the resurrection of the dry bones. But in, um, in Ezekiel 47, um, there's just a short reading there that I want to take with you this morning. Let's start about uh, verse 2, 47 verse 2. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward, and behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters, the waters were to the ankles, and he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knees. And again he measured a thousand and brought me through, and the waters were to my, to my loins. Afterward, he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over, for the wa waters were risen, waters to swim in, yea, a river that would not be passed over. And I found that so exciting, because as I went into that conference, 
in Auckland, it was just like the presence of the Lord there was so great that I just immediately had this vision of Jesus walking out into this river. And he was walking out quite slowly. To, the water came up to his ankles, and then the water came up to his knees, and then the water came up around his shoulders. And I said, oh, Lord, can I take your hand and go with you? And that's what he's doing. He's taking us out. As we hold his hand, he's taking us out. So we are going to have waters to swim in, folks. And I was thinking about our red frogs over there in Brisbane. I think their feet will be getting off the ground and they'll be getting into a few things that they weren't counting on over there. But it really is a matter of swimming in those waters, but you have to take a risk of faith to do it. I'm finding sometimes you don't know how you're going to be treated. Maybe, you, maybe they'll accept and maybe, or maybe they will reject, but we need to do that. So seeing as such a time as this of acceleration, we're all going to put the foot down, especially this week, aren't we? Amen? Put the foot down and, and start swimming in those waters that are being prepared for us. We're not waiting on it to happen. It's here now and it's happening now. What happened to my husband? I'd like to share the word this morning. I want to do some teaching for a few moments. Then I want to do some preaching. And we might get into some evangelism. <laughs> See what happens. But before I do that, I want to talk. Maybe there's people here who have, because of the circumstances of life, because of difficulties and because of situations that have arisen which are not their fault. Some people feel inferior and some people feel not good enough, and they struggle with these emotions regularly. And I, I've got some good news this morning. If you're one of such of those people, then you're the kind of person that Jesus came for. Jesus came for people who are not good enough. And the fact of the matter is this. If we were twice as good as we are now next week, we would never be good enough. And if we were twice as good again the next week, we still wouldn't be good enough because it's got nothing to do with how good we are. It's got all to do, as Pastor Paul prophesied, with the goodness of God and the blood of Christ and what Jesus has done for us. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he made him to be sin who knew no sin, that we would be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 And... That's what it's about. He makes us good enough. We will never be good enough on our own. And without the blood of Christ, we would never do it. And sometimes people, especially men, determined men, self-made men, men who would either do it themselves or bust. I used to be one of those kind of people. I'd do it myself or bust. And a lot of men like that. But we can't do this. Men, strong men, we cannot do this. We just have to accept the work of the cross. We just have to humble ourselves and say, thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your love, for your acceptance, for your blood that cleanses us from all sin. So if you're here today and you've been like that, you don't need to be like that any longer. Jesus came for people just like that and like people just like me come to lift us up you are totally accepted in the beloved he loves you with an everlasting love don't worry if you're good enough it's the blood of Christ that makes us good enough it's the goodness of God that makes us good enough and we just have to have faith and believe what God says is true and that'll do it that's all it needs Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Okay, I want to share this morning the first conflict in the Bible, the first problem, and it didn't take long. And you find that with people, it never takes long. Never takes long. You get enough people in a certain place, it won't take long. It doesn't take long. I'm going to read here in the book of Genesis chapter 4, and this is a well-known story, the story of Cain and Abel and their offerings. 
And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain bought of the fruit of the ground an offering to the Lord. And Abel, he also bought the firstlings of the flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and unto his offering he had not respect, and Cain was wroth and his countenance fell. Father, this morning I pray, Lord, that you would just open our understanding and open our eyes, Lord, that we can understand these principles, Lord, that we can put them into place for good in our lives in Jesus' wonderful name. I have heard some wacky theories why one offering was accepted and one offering was rejected. I've heard theories like it's obvious because there was blood in Abel's offering and when Cain turned up with bean sprouts and a cabbage, what would you expect out of a bit of carrot juice? What would you expect? But that had nothing to do with it. The fact of the matter is God will accept any offering that any person has to give whether it be great and much or whether it be small. Had nothing to do with the offering, as we'll say. And it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground unto the Lord. In the process of time, in the fullness of time, this happens. And in our lives also, there will come a time when we will meet such a time as this. In the fullness of time, it will be time for us to do some kind of action and some kind of work for the Lord in the fullness of time. It almost seems as if these two boys, probably young men, bought their offering. It seemed as if, or just a coincidence, that they appeared to bring it on the same day. I think it was, they talked about it, and one says, I think we should bring an offering to the Lord. And so, oh, that's not a bad idea. So he said, well, I'll bring an offering too. So in the process of time, they bought this offering. Abel bought also of the firstling of his flock and the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel first and then to his offering. But unto Cain and his offering, he had not respect. He didn't have respect to Cain, and then he didn't have respect to his offering. And this is the important issue why one was accepted and one wasn't, as we'll see. There's nothing wrong with the offering. We'll have a look at a scripture later on that will say that. There was nothing wrong with either offering. They were great offerings. But you see, we have people in this church who offer every week. We have people called the manager that come here and open up the place and get the heaters going while some of us are still in bed on a Sunday morning. Then we have the musos that come and offer their gifts and their talents before the Lord. It's not just, oh, brother, I've got to go and play today. The old boy's glad I'm turning up today because if it wasn't for, if I wasn't playing, I wouldn't be here. They're not the kind of offering the Lord's looking for. So, oh, praise the Lord. It's time to go to the house of the Lord today. I'll enter his courts with thanksgiving and enter his gates with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will be glad and rejoice in it. And that's the kind of attitude we need. Not the old boy, speaking of, he's not here today. He's not here today. The old boy is glad to see me today. He's lucky. He's really lucky I made it today. He's got no idea what a struggle it was for me to get here today on time. He's got no idea what kind of a week I've had. Brother, you wouldn't believe it. We have no idea what kind of week the old boy's had. And he probably won't tell you. He probably won't. It won't be on the notices. And so we all bring offerings to the Lord. We have people out in the Sunday school that are offering their service and their gifts and their talents before the Lord. And it depends how we offer it. And then right down at the finish, there's the financial offering. Some say, oh, brother, look through my wallet and pick out the poor, smallest note I've got, put it in. Five dollar note, tear it in half. 
50-50, not bad going. That we need to give the offering with joy and willingly. When they built the tabernacle, you know this. They took the offering of everybody that had a willing heart. Amen. And so I have to watch myself too because it's not just a matter of tossing some finance in the bag or making an automatic payment. So, oh, well, I've dealt with that for the 12 months. It's under control. We need to think that's an, my offering to the Lord. And I would really like the Lord to have respect unto the offering and unto me. So it's how we offer. We are offering all the time. And so the Lord said unto Cain, verse 6, Cain's felt, uh, countenance fell and he was wroth, just like that, when he was rejected and his offering was rejected. God said to Cain, why are you wroth? And why is thy countenance falling? If you do well, shall thou not be accepted. And if you don't do well, sin lieth at the door. And God gave Cain a personal invitation into his presence. He said, if you do well, I will accept you, my son. But if you don't do well, sin lieth at the door. This is an invitation from God. This was an invitation from God himself. Cain had a decision. He said, now, I wonder what I'll do. I wonder what I'll do. You'll find that Cain's heart was filled with anger, had an anger problem, and a jealousy problem. They are two terrible emotions that we have to get rid of. That's just, and that was the good news about Cain. That was the good news. Anger problem. Said he was wroth. If you go into 2 Corinthians about the work of the flesh, the work of the flesh are these. It goes in to quote them, adultery, fornication, all the things. Then it gets down to wrath. It gets to anger and it gets to wrath. Now, wrath is different to anger because wrath has an element of manipulation weaved into it. Wrath says this about wrath if you study it, that people who have wrath in their heart, that they plan at home upon their bed evil for some particular person. Someone they're upset with, they will plan evil upon their bed and then they'll go and they will execute that thing towards that person. And so it's a nasty thing, wrath. I think anger is different. Some, some people get angry and some, there's all sorts of anger. Some people just blow up straight away. I used to work in the cheese factory years ago and we had a boss, he was a great boss, but he would blow up straight away. Something went wrong, he would just go ballistic. And his choice of words, I can't share with you today. Because you're all too young. <laughs> but, anyway, but then he would forget them and his anger would be gone straight away. And he'd just carry on as usual. He's a great guy, good friend of mine. But then there's other people that get angry. And they just come slowly to the boil. <laughs> slowly to the boil. But when they overflow, brother, they're a force to be reckoned with. And I always say there's only one thing worse than an angry man is an angry woman. <laughs> there's a brave soul. <laughs> one brave man in a group this size is pretty good. I remember coming home, we were in the army and a uh, trainload of soldiers coming home and a family got on the train with us and I'll tell you this, she was a big mama. She was a big woman with, and she had four or five children with her 
she had this boy who was about 15 or 16. He was a big kid. And he shot on first and got in behind the door. And when his mother came in, he jumped and he went, Wah! and she grabbed him by the throat. <laughs> and she went, tsh, 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 sat him down. And all us soldiers <laughs> were like dead men. <laughs> I meant to be two IC of this outfit with the, I was in charge of the Bren guns and the mortars, which was meant to be the firepower of the day. And I thought, if I can't face her, I'm not ready for war yet. We had a bit more training. Not one person in that carriage, there's probably about 30 young men, not one picked up their rifle and said, Halt! Who goes there? <laughs> Never move. Wild women. I've dealt with a few of them in my pastoring days. Wrath. So wrath is a terrible thing. It's worse than anger. He had an anger problem, but he also had this wrath, which was manipulative, and it was also calculated, and it was also a bit of a power freak, power freak thing. Verse 8 said this, Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. This was the ongoing effect of his offering in himself not being respected by God. Just slew him. But we see a lot of that today, don't we? People murdering people. You wonder whatever's wrong with them. Wonder whatever's wrong with them. In the very next verse, God turns up. Great timing, isn't it? Cain just wipes himself down and stands there looking pretty. God said to him, The Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I don't know. I haven't got a clue. I haven't seen him. And so he just told a barefaced lie to God. Just like that. Barefaced lie. So he was jealous, had an anger problem, he had wrath, and he was a liar and also a murderer. Had murder in his heart. And these are the four character things why God did not respect Cain or his offering. It wasn't his offering, as we'll see. We turn to scripture in a moment, which will prove his offering. It was a great offering. And some of and so I have to be careful for myself how I am and how my attitude is when I make an offering to God. That I don't say, Oh brother, here's that offering again. They're after the money. <laughs> after the money you know m money is funny stuff money once you spend it it's gone funny stuff but the Bible says to make friend of the unrighteous mammon it'll either be a friend or our enemy let finance serve us don't let us serve finance so you have these character deficiencies which God knows. This is one of the problems with God. He knows what's going on on the inside. Because sometimes we don't know what other people are thinking. And sometimes we suspect what other people are thinking. I think he's thinking this. You see? But he could be thinking anything. Or he could be one of those people that are vacant. No thinky. Could be nobody home. Lights are on, nobody home. Could be like that. And so we'll just notice this scripture over in Hebrews. Amazes me that Cain gets a mention in the book of Hebrews. 
the chapter of faith, all the faith heroes, turn over there, and Cain gets in there. Hebrews, where are you? How many Titus, Philemon, Hebrew? Here we go. Chapter 11 and verse 4 said this. This is one of the secrets. By faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith. And the offerings we give to God, we should give by faith. By faith, we serve God. By faith, we put our finance in the bucket. By faith, we serve, whether it's the singing or the music, song leading, Sunday school, up in the creche, by faith we do this as unto the Lord. Because sometimes we can get so used to doing things that it just comes humdrum and we just do it and we never give it any thought. Wasn't even pleased when I was able to give an offering to the Lord. Wasn't pleased. And of course coming to the house of God which is especially important. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I thought, oh, brother, here's Sunday again. I suppose I better show up or they'll be wondering what's going on with me. Allowed to say that here? <laughs> boy, the old boy's pretty pleased. He's lucky to see me here today. <laughs> you know how I'm feeling. I'm not the pastor of this church, so I can say this. I'd be a bit naughty. I mightn't be asked back up here again. <laughs> By faith, offered a, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained the witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith. You see, it says this, By faith he offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. The fact of the matter is we have Two excellent sacrifices. Abel's offering was excellent. Cain's offering was excellent. But Abel's was more excellent because of faith. Nothing wrong with Cain's offering. It was his whole character was the trouble. He had jealousy in his heart. He had wrath and anger in his heart. He was a liar. And he was a murderer. He had all these things in his heart. And that's why God didn't have respect unto Cain or unto his offering. Then it goes on to say, the next verse in Genesis says this. This is a good verse. This I like this verse. And God said to him, What have you done, Cain? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And the voice of Cain, of Abel's, had a voice in his blood. Blood has a voice. And I was just thinking about the blood of Christ. Wow, what a voice the blood of Christ has got. Amen. You're not redeemed with silver and gold, but you're redeemed with the precious blood of the Lamb from every kindred, tongue, and nation upon the face of the earth. You've been redeemed. And that word redeemed means that you have been bought back and the price is paid in full. Any, ever, anybody here ever bought anything on time payment? The wealthy just pay cash. The rest of us sometimes have to pay a down payment and then pay it off. And then finally, it's the last payment. It's paid in full. And the thing that you've been paying for, this little bean bag, it's paid in full and now it belongs to me. He's redeemed us from sin. He has made a full payment by the blood of Christ. Your salvation and your spiritual welfare has been totally paid for in full by the Lord. Isn't that good news? That's great news. Amen. I want to preach for a few minutes. Found this scripture just recently. It's a great scripture. In Timothy. Probably people are saying, I've known the scripture since I was a kid. And that's good. Said this in 2 Timothy 1 verse 9. That God hath 
See, by the way, as you probably realize, I still use the old King James Bible. I haven't got one of those pads with the flick, the magic flick. I got the King James Bible. God hath saved us and called us with a holy calling. This is you. Called you with a holy calling. Not according to our works. Got nothing to do with our works. But according to his purpose. According to his own purpose and grace. And this is the bit that really is amazing. Which was given unto us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Whew. So before the world began, this is what the scripture is saying. Before the world began, God looked down through the corridor of time, through all the generations, through your grandfather, your great-grandfather. What a great-grandson here today. He was pleased to see me when he came in. His eyes were closed, but I could tell he was pleased to see me. So God looks down through the corridor of time, right from Adam through all the generations to see you here today. How about that? That's pretty amazing. And not only that, but he's put special purposes in you that in the fullness of time, that when the time comes, that you'll pull out this special purpose and minister to someone with it. And there's people here that are doing this all the time. As, since we've been here, I see people going to India. I see people going to Uganda. People going to some funny places. In the love of Christ, ministering salvation and the goodness of God. I see this. I see people going down to the prison and minist ministering there. I see other people doing all sorts of things. We've got these frogs jumping all over the place. Even frogs jumping all over the place there in the Gold Coast. Alice and I were in the Gold Coast. This is years ago. And uh, the schoolies arrived. I didn't even know there was such a thing as the schoolies coming to the Gold Coast. And, but I really enjoyed them. Brother, they livened the place up, I can tell you. Alice wasn't so keen on these schoolies. I thought they were great. I love kids. They were a great bunch of kids. Wild. But great. So he's called you with a holy calling and put in you special purposes for special occasions that you will be able to pull out these special purposes and minister to someone. And there's people in this church doing this on a very regular basis. There's a scripture that talks about in the Bible as I diverse for a moment talks about people will see your good works and glorify your Father within heaven. And I thought, I haven't seen a lot of that in my life. But recently I've heard of two instances where this beautiful girl from a particular church in town went to work for a Christian woman and she was about to give up on God. But she said, when I saw the dedication and Christianity working in this woman in a practical way in everyday events, on the job, Christianity. She said, I have decided to carry on with God. Isn't that amazing? And I said to this person, you didn't even know your light was blinking. You know the story, let your light shine before people. Her light was blinking away there and she didn't even know she was blinking. Your light's blinking. I wonder what people are seeing. We're all blinking. Some are blinking horrible and some are blinking good. <laughs> some are just blinking. Your light is blinking if you're a Christian. And you never know who's blinking watching you. <laughs> when people don't think anybody's looking, somebody's blinking while watching you. Isn't that amazing? Let your light so shine before men that they'll see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Heard of another person 
And this young man, great young man, I know this young man, very quiet young man, could be looked upon as a bit shy, but a great, honest, hard-working, good living person. And somebody used to go to the trouble just to shake his hand every Sunday when he came to church. And he said to his mum recently, last week it was, if it wasn't for that person taking a small interest in me, I would not be going to church today. And something as small as a welcome and a smile and a handshake from you could change somebody's life. Isn't that amazing? So you see somebody like that, keep it up because you never know because your light's blinking and it means something to those people. Or they could come to church, say nothing, do nothing and go home. And nobody said hello to them. And so they think, nobody's blinking well interested in me, mate. Or you let your light blink and talk to someone. All you have to do, and it's not a lot. That's a good thing about God. You don't have to do a lot to be noticed. If you give somebody a cup of water in the name of the Lord, give a prophet a cup of water, we can do some of this stuff. These special purposes. I want to say this this morning. Tony Mahino and Deborah. Their blinking lights are shining. But Tony, I want to say this to you, that in you are a lot of special purposes. And they're, layered in, they're like a layer. They're like bullets in the magazine of a gun. That when you fire off that first one, the next one just pops up. And that's what these things are like in you. And in you too, Deborah. But you've probably been firing off a few more shots than Tony, but he's got some good stuff on there. And I just see this. Magazine, you're loaded, man. <laughs> you're big of a loaded with this stuff. And as you get rid of that top layer, they'll just keep coming up and keep coming up and keep coming up. I see that for you. So let your light so shine. Special purposes. Because you never know when it's going to happen. The right time and the right place. I remember one time I was in Tonga. And uh, it's an interesting place, Tonga. I'd been there, I think I'd been there a dozen times over to the church we planted there years ago. And uh, these we actually went over there to give the pastor a, a rev up. He needed to strum up, and unfortunately, I was the person that had to do it. So, so I don't know if the repercussion of this was because he took it great, and we got on great, and we got the issue sorted, and we were great. But the next day, two pastors there, they said, well, tomorrow you won't have anything to do because we've been having house meetings every night. Free day for you tomorrow. And I always get worried when that happens in Tonga. And so I said, we'll pick you up about 10 o'clock. So they come around and pick me up at 10 o'clock. And uh, I went, went with them. And they were setting up a set in the corner with tarpa cloths along two sides. And they had a table with shells on and a microphone there. And the TV camera was there. It was a crew from France were doing some programs in Tonga. And I was sitting on a heap of sleepers. And I was thinking, this will be good. I'll enjoy this because I thought, what was, see, when you think, you've got to watch what you think. I thought, one pastor will be speaking in Tongan and the other pastor will interpret it because these guys could preach. They're great preachers. So I'm sitting on this heap of wood watching this and then the guy behind the camera come over and he says, well, we're nearly ready to start, mate. And I said, oh, that's good. He said, what I want you to do, and I thought, hello, here we go. What I want you to do, I want you to introduce this subject. You will say, welcome to God's word in action. And then you will preach for half an hour. And then I will give you the 10-5 countdown. 
and you will finish right on the dot of half an hour. And I thought, oh, thanks very much. So he said, okay, let's go. So start, preach, started off and preached for about 10 minutes and the camera misfunctioned. So that was okay. So I went back and sat on my heap of wood. But the girl that was with the film crew, part of the film crew, came over and she says, I was doing an evangelistic thing. And she says, I want to rededicate my life to Christ. And so I led her to the Lord. and We had some tears and other stuff. Need a hanky and she's bawling, which is a good sign because some tears are good tears. And, and then, so he, then he said, okay, chop, chop, we're ready to go again, but we have to start at the start. And I was thinking, where did we start, mate? So we'd done the program anyway, and uh, he gave me the signal to finish, and we finished. They edited it up, and I watched it that night. It was beamed out over the South Pacific to various countries, and for a no-notice sermon, it went all right. I was a bit surprised because I criticised myself fairly harshly. <laughs> so you never know. So you never know. So as we come to a close today, know this. Know this, people, that it's got nothing to do with our goodness or badness. It's all to do with the goodness of God and the blood of Christ and the forgiveness of God. You are totally accepted in the beloved wherever you started. And the rest, know this, that there are special purposes in you. Michelle, there are many special purposes still within you that are yet to be discovered and to be revealed. And when you minister these, there'll be another one there just like it, underneath, ready to come. The fact of the matter is, guys, the whole church, we're all loaded with special purposes. That's why the world can be won. And I just wonder as we come to a close today if there's anyone in our midst that has never given their life to Christ. Or if you backslidden. I just wonder, as the musos come, is anyone here today, I'd just love to see you raise your hand if you've never given your life to Christ. I'd love to pray for you and with you. Just raise your hand. If you've never given your life to Christ and you'd like to. Be the best decision you ever make if that's you. Glory to God. We we'll just pray as we hand the service back to Pastor Garth. Father, we just thank you for your goodness this morning. We pray your blessing upon each person. Lord, your word, word declares you daily load us down with benefits. Lord, I pray our eyes will be opened. Lord, that when we offer, Lord, we can offer in faith. Lord, we can offer with expectation. Lord, we can offer with love. Lord, and we can come into your house with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We can say this is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God bless you this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's give Pastor Leo a great hand. I love that. What a great word. Come on. We're made on purpose for purpose. It's not what we give, it's how we give it. Amen. Well, why don't we stand as we close with worship today? And just as we do that, I want to, I want to mention um, our Red Frogs who are over in, in Australia right now. They're having a phenomenal time. Uh, we've read a number of texts from them throughout the week. And, uh, and, and, and one of the great reports is that, uh, that Shannon's passing on to us is that they are just having divine appointments all over the place. They're one of the things they're celebrating most, not just with our guys that have gone, but with all the Red Frogs teams that are there. Uh, that it just seems to be as though God's setting them up with meeting people in the right places at the right times and giving them the right things to say. So there's divine wisdom, there's grace, there's the love of the fathers being shed abroad. And young kids uh, that have gone up to, to, to mix up their minds with alcohol and all that kind of stuff are actually getting their, 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 their feet set 
on the right track and just meeting with Jesus. So amen to all that. Why don't we stand? Let's, let's close the service this morning. The altar's open. If you want prayer for anything, if you want to respond to the, to the message, that great message that Pastor Leo brought this morning, I'm sure he'd be uh, more than happy to come and pray with you. Uh, we've got a great prayer team on as well. But God bless you. Have a great day. In Jesus' name, amen.